A lot of us start our sewing journeys by ourselves without a teacher guiding us, so it's very natural that sometimes we do sewing mistakes and we don't even know they are mistakes. At least I know I totally did that. In this video, I want to share five very common sewing mistakes and how to avoid them. Rest assured, all these mistakes are practice based from my own experience. This video is created in partnership with Mettler, manufacturer of high quality threads and the threads that I've been using for the past four years. So let's begin with a common mistake number one, and it's not testing seams before sewing them on the final garment. This is one of the golden rules of sewing that is often overlooked. Sure, sewing a seam right away on the final garment does save us quite a lot of time, but if we take a moment and do a sample seam first, we are able to find the right settings for our design. Let's do an example how to test the seam. I'm currently planning on making jeans. This is going to be my very big April project and I want to add that signature top stitch denim seam. To select the perfect top stitch seam for my design, I'm going to make a few test seams. The first seam I'm going to make is made using a single all-purpose polyester thread and 4 mm stitch length. While it does hold fabric layers together very securely, the signature seam denim is not fully there. Let's do a second test seam, but instead of simple straight stitch, let's select a triple straight stitch, which is usually called elastic straight stitch. When the seam is made using the same polyester all-purpose thread and triple stitch, now we get a more thicker seam effect and we're definitely getting closer to that signature denim look. Now, the downside of this technique is that it's going to take us three times longer to make the seam because the sewing machine is going to repeat the same stitch three times front, back, front, and then move to the other stitch. What about if we add three same threads at the top? For this particular stitch, we need to add a top stitch needle and thread the sewing machine from the top using same three threads. The threading looks exactly the same as if you would be threading the sewing machine with a single thread. And this is the effect that we get. Now let's make a final sample seam using a special denim thread called Mettler Denim Dock. This thread is made from polyester core and cotton covering, which ensures sewing ease and seam performance. It has a bit of a matte look and it comes in 10 classic denim colors. While making test seam using this thread, we can select the best color for our design and also fine tune the thread tension. So here is one very simple example how for the same seam you have several different options and testing them out on the specific fabric will allow you to choose the best stitch for your design, the best stitch length, fine tune the tension and find the right thread color for your design, as well as choosing the right needle and the right needle size. It's an additional step, but if you want to create a garment that's going to last you a long time, taking an extra step, taking an extra moment to test the seam will definitely pay off. Second very common sewing mistake is not following the grain line. This is one of those teeny tiny sewing things that is not talked about enough because it will have a massive impact towards the sewing of the garment and later wearing it. To understand the importance of grain line, let's take a look at the anatomy of the fabric. Fabric has lengthwise running edge, which is called salvage. Parallel to salvage, we have vertical running threads called warp. Crossing vertical threads, we have horizontal threads that are called weft. Diagonally from salvage, we have bias, which is where the fabric has the most stretch. During the weaving process, the vertical threads are stretched on the loom, making them the strongest part of the fabric. Because of that, every pattern detail has a line called grain line marking, 
showing how to position pattern detail parallel to fabric edge to get proper wear of the garment. If the grain line marking is not followed, then we're cutting the detail slightly on the bias and it causes the fabric to twist, stretch out and drape differently than intended by the pattern. While following the grain line might sound like a very minuscule detail, not following the grain line marking will have a massive impact towards the garment it quality. In fact, not following the grain line marking when cutting out pattern pieces is one of the biggest sewing mistakes that is often very difficult or impossible to fix. As much as it might be tempting to squeeze out the most of the fabric you have and place those pattern details in any direction, make sure to follow the grain line to avoid cutting errors and avoid frustration later. While we are on the topic of of grain line, let's go even further and let's talk about not following the grain line marking arrow. So every pattern detail that you have has a grain line marking. And not only that, but it also has a tiny arrow at the bottom. This little arrow is pointing you in the right directions so that you position every pattern detail with the arrow pointing down. Now, why that's so important? The best example for that is Fur. fur has nap which has a very clear direction. When cutting fur, we position the pattern detail so that the grain line arrow is pointing downward and the nap is laying flat and nice. Now let's imagine what happens when we cut this beautiful faux fur and the grain line arrow is pointing upside. Then the nap would also be facing upside making it very, very weird look. So when you follow the arrow direction, it will ensure that all your pattern details that have nap are following the nap direction. And not only that, you will avoid cutting one pattern piece facing down and the other facing upside. So when the fabric has nap, this is very easy to understand. And when we move into different fabrics, it's a little bit tricky. Let's say you have fabric that has a very distinctive flower print and the flowers are facing upwards. Following the grain line arrow will allow you to cut all details with a flower print facing in the same direction. So you won't end up with the flowers facing upwards in the front and the flowers facing down at the back. Now you're probably thinking, if I work with a solid color fabric that doesn't have any nap, I can cut it in any direction. And this is where things get very tricky, even for a professional or experienced sewist. So the thing is that some solid color fabrics have different shine in different directions. When we're cutting fabric, it's laying flat on the table. So we cannot catch that shine visually. However, when we wear the garment, we are standing right and the fabric is now being vertical, making it reflect light in different ways and if the fabric pieces are cut here facing one side and at the back facing the other side up we might get different shine which in some cases may be very noticeable. So the best tip how to avoid this problem is to always cut your pattern details with the arrow facing in the same direction. I want to take a moment in this video and tell you about my new project that I'm currently working on. This year I want to dive even deeper into teaching sewing and because of that I'm currently working on a new series of courses called Design and Sew where I'm going to show you how you can take your own measurements create a pattern that fits your figure and sew a garment using professional techniques. If that sounds like something you would be interested in, the first course will be coming out early May and I will link it in the description box down below so that you can sign up to get notified when the course is live. Now let's continue with our list. The fourth very common mistake is actually avoiding sewing knits. Now there is a myth that sewing knit fabrics can can be challenging. However, that's a myth and I want to show you how you can very easily sew knit fabrics no matter what sewing machine you have. So let's do a little experiment. I'm going to sew this very thin jersey fabric using regular settings 
straight stitch, all-purpose polyester thread and universal needle. The result is a wavy seam and it will break the moment that the fabric is stretched. That's because the seam has no elasticity while the fabric does. Now let's sew the same fabric on same sewing machine but let's make a few small adjustments. First, we're going to switch from regular all-purpose polyester thread to elastic thread Seraflex. Thanks to its innovative composition, this thread can be stretched up to 65%, compared to about 20% stretch on all-purpose polyester thread. Seraflex is used both as top and bobbin thread. The thread tension is reduced so that we get more thread in the seam for maximum elasticity. Second adjustment we're going to make is switch from universal needle to jersey stretch needle. This needle has a rounded tip, which will help prevent knit fabric loops from getting damaged. Third, and this is optional, with delicate knit fabrics, slip a tearaway stabilizer under the fabric so that the fabric is being evenly feeded through the feed dogs. Tearaway stabilizer is removed once the seam is finished. After sewing a seam with these adjustments, the result is beautiful seam on knit fabrics that is laying completely flat and has plenty of stretch thanks to elastic thread Seraflex. Three small changes, but what a huge difference. Don't miss out on sewing knit fabrics because they are so comfortable to wear and you can sew it on any sewing machine that you have with very few small changes. Fifth and final very common sewing mistake is not fitting pattern before cutting. This used to be my biggest sewing mistake and for the longest time I couldn't figure out why I was having such a hard time fitting my clothes. So here's the very harsh truth. The commercial patterns are drafted for standard figure, while in reality our figures are very different. Let's take one example. Commercial women's patterns are usually drafted for height 168 or 170 centimeter height and B cup bust. So if you're neither of these measurements, you already have to do quite a few adjustments to commercial pattern for it to fit your figure properly. Let's take another example and in this example I'm going to use my own measurements. My height is 169 centimeters so I do fit in the standard commercial pattern height range. However, my torso is longer by two centimeters which means that whenever I am working with a commercial pattern I always have to lower the waistline by two centimeters. Not only that, but also my hip line is about two centimeters lower than the average hip line, which also means that in close fitted garments, close fitted dresses, skirts, pants, I also have to lower the hip line as well. And not to mention that my waist and my hips are two sizes different. So if I'm making skirt or pants, I always have to make adjustments between different sizes for the garment to actually fit. Now, of course, fitting is a very, very big topic that we won't be able to cover fully in this video, but I want to share a fitting routine that I use and gives me very good results when working with commercial patterns. So the first thing is taking my own measurements. So not only do I take the bust, waist and hip measurements, but I also take measurements like the shoulder length, the bust height, the back length, the hip height, all these different measurements, because the more measurements I have, the better I can adjust the commercial pattern. Second step that I take is once I have my own measurements, I go ahead and I measure the pattern to see how all those measurements correlate with my body measurement. Of course, here you have to remember that the pattern will have wearing ease on bust, waist and hips. If I see that some of the measurements deviate from my body measurements too much, I adjust them straight on the paper pattern before cutting anything from the fabric. This usually allows me to catch lots of fitting issues before the scissors touch the fabric. The first step is going to sound like too much, but it's actually what allows me to get that very, very good fit. Once I get all my fabric pieces cut out from already adjusted pattern, 
I then assemble the entire garment using hand base stitch. Then I put the garment on and I can catch any additional fitting issues that I can solve before I start sewing any seam on sewing machine. So this three-step fitting method has helped me significantly reduce fit issues in commercial patterns and get that professionally looking fit. Additional tip that has helped me significantly improve the fit in commercial patterns was actually learning pattern making. This is why I want to share that knowledge with you and this is why I'm working on the courses that will include pattern making because our figures are far from standard and to create the best fit it's best to create the pattern from scratch and having the knowledge of pattern making will allow you to adjust commercial patterns way way easier. So here are all five very common sewing mistakes that I wanted to share in today's video and hopefully these tips will help you achieve better sewing results because they definitely helped me. Thank you for watching today's video and I will see you next time. Bye!